the most comic accurate accurate comic book movies. Comic book accuracy. Comic book accurate. Comic accurate. Comic accurate. Comic book accurate. Comic accurate. Comic book accuracy. If you're a fan of any type of entertainment related to comic books, whether it's live action movies, animation, video games, I'm sure you've heard the term comic accuracy being thrown around. And the big question here is, does comic accuracy matter? But first, we need to really understand what comic accuracy is and what it is not. Now, some people might say that comic accuracy is the verbatim adaptation of the comic books. And this is an incorrect interpretation of the term, which I think rubs some fans the wrong way. Because obviously, wanting every single adaptation to be verbatim is outrageous. And I don't think the audience is actually asking for this. God, you're that guy. So you remember of me? That I was that guy? I am Angstrom Levy, and you made me into a monster. I thought you were stronger. I had to kill him. He tried to kill me. He was going to kill my mom and my brother. He made me do it. It was an accident, but he made me do it. Now before we continue, there's something I want to point out. Comic books are a visual medium. I want you guys to keep that in mind because it'll be important throughout the video. So when it comes to adapting anything comic book related, there's two parts to comic accuracy, the characters and the story. Now characters tend to have a lot of unique traits that make them recognizable to the fandom. Whether it's their personality, their physical appearance, their attire their principles or even the relationships they have with other characters. And some of these traits are vital to each individual character. So for example, you have Batman being a good detective, Tony Stark being a genius, or even Peter's uncle being the reason he becomes a hero. These are important traits of the character that should be present in any of their adaptations. Now when it comes to a character's physical appearance, the expectations really do vary from character to character. And like I said, comic books are a visual medium. So for instance, Matt Murdock is a redhead in the comics, but his live action depiction isn't. And that really isn't a big deal because his hair isn't what makes him recognizable. But on the flip side, since we're talking about hair color, there are characters who are more recognized by the color of their hair, like Storm and Starfire, so you can see the difference. And as far as things like costumes go, there's so much that can be done with adaptations while still respecting the comic books. Though some fans do tend to compare and nitpick at times. Now let me just go ahead and address the elephant in the room since we're talking about characters. I am not a fan of race swapping or gender swapping or any type of swapping. There are literally hundreds of thousands of characters in the comic books from different demographics, backgrounds, cultures, etc. So swapping of any kind is unacceptable in this day and age. And one-offs from alternate universes don't count either. But the problem I really have with race swapping in particular are the people who defend it. We've heard the age old argument that race isn't important to the character. And you know, I think most of the people who make this argument don't really read comics because I've noticed that this argument mostly comes up when the character being race swapped is white. But let's entertain that argument for a second. Black Panther is a black character from Africa. Most of his lore is centered around African culture, even down to the aesthetics. So of course his race is important to his character. So naturally someone black should play him. Let's look at another black character, Blade. Blade is a black character from the UK. Yes, for those of you who don't know, Blade is British. He was born in London. There is very little of Blade's lore that centers around him being black. So since his race is not important to his character, anyone should play him, right? No! Blade is black in the comic books, so I would prefer him to be black in the adaptations as well. But I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't feel that way about characters of other demographics, wouldn't I? So you guys can see how the argument of race not being important to the character might get you an outcome that you probably won't want.
There are cases where it's okay to cast anyone to play a character, like when that character is an alien or has a distinct visual look. It's really just a matter of making them look like that character. Remember, comic books are a visual medium. Now, there can be times where the adaptation will stray just a little from accurately depicting some parts of the character, but if it's good enough, the audience tends to ignore that aspect in the adaptation. A good example of this is Wolverine. In the comic books, Wolverine is really short. He's just over 5 feet, yet Hugh Jackman is about 6'3", but he's done such a good job at playing the character that fans of the comic books have ignored his height. On the other hand, there are times where the adaptation strays so far from the core aspects of the character that you get things like this. But enough about characters, let's talk about the stories. There are tons of ways a story can be adapted from the comic books, and it's really about keeping the key parts of that story. For example, you have comics like Civil War and Infinity Gauntlet that have both been adapted into films. These aren't verbatim adaptations of the comic books, but the core aspect of those stories do remain intact. There can be times where accurately adapting the story doesn't always work, because everything in the comic books is not good. Which is why I stated early in the video that no one really wants everything in the comics adapted. And this actually applies to adapting characters as well. So you might have a movie or a TV show that's really comic accurate, but that accuracy doesn't always dictate the quality. On the other hand, sometimes a bad story from the comics can be adapted and the adaptation makes the story better. An example of this is Spider-Man No Way Home. I actually have a video where I break down how No Way Home improves the One More Day storyline which is arguably one of the worst Spider-Man stories to exist from the comics. Now, sometimes writers will have other stories they want to tell when adapting comic books, and they'll make creative decisions and will stray away from the comics. However, there are parts of the source material that they can use to not only respect it, but still tell the story they want to tell. These creative decisions sometimes do land well with the audience, and other times they can get mixed reception. So with all this being said, what is the takeaway here? Does comic accuracy really matter? Well, the answer is yes and no, because comic accuracy is really a spectrum, it's not binary. And as I pointed out earlier in the video, the accuracy doesn't always dictate the quality of the adaptation. However, once again, comic books are a visual medium, and fans of those comics tend to have certain expectations when it comes to these characters and their stories. So when adapting them in whatever medium, it's really just about respecting them and not doing things like this. If you guys enjoyed the video, like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.